two in like a five and a half minute stretch. Can you kind of describe what it's like to, to be in a zone like that? Um, I mean, it's a, it's a good feeling. Um, I mean, just kind of get into a rhythm and a, and a goal seems bigger than what it really is. But um, um, I was just trying to trying to make plays and, and, and trying to get us back in, into the into the game. And um, fortunately, my, my teammates got me the ball when I needed it. And uh, fortunately, I was um, able to make shots. Coach, you mentioned that you what is it about Northern Iowa that you just seem to light it up from deep? Um, I mean, it's, if, I mean, if I were to shoot it like that every game, it would be tough for anyone. Uh, but, I mean, it just it happened to be those guys this time. I mean, they were playing good defense. I, I just, I, I was hitting tough shots, and but um, it's just I just got into a rhythm, and I'm really a rhythm guy. If I can get into a rhythm, I, I play better that way. But um, I was just trying to trying to get to my spots and get to my comfort zones on the floor and get going, going toward the basket. And then I knew after I started to see some shots going, I could um, go to the outside and hit a few shots too. What were you thinking at halftime about what you guys did wrong and what you needed to do to correct it? Um, my main thing in the locker room, I was just telling, telling the guys we have to stay together and we have to play together and we have to quit. Um, Worrying about calls and, and worrying about the last play because that's what we were doing a lot of. And I was just trying to tell the guys we just got to stay together because when we play together, we talk to each other um, on the defensive end. That's something we weren't doing in the first half. We weren't talking at all. And when you play together, you have fun and, and you play for one another. So I was just trying to tell us don't get down and out. There's plenty of time left. We can make a comeback. And that's what that's what me and the other guys are saying. We we're just saying just, just stay together and, and believe that we can come back. So the, the first thing that First step to doing that is believing that you can do it. You passed up a couple of threes in the first half, and then again, when you made your first run early in the second half, you had one wide open. I think maybe Will or Tyshawn hit you from the corner. Why did you pass those up at that point? Um, I was really um, trying to get to the rim. I was I was really trying to get to the rim, and I know the the, the one you're talking about. I, I actually told Will, I, I told him I should have shot it. But um, he was like, just keep attacking, just keep attacking. I just wanted to get that mindset going and not settle for threes when I wasn't on yet. Because um, I'm, I'm not really a three-point shooter, so I get to the basket, and that's, that's what I do best. And then after that, then I can then step out. But um, I just wanted to emphasize getting to the rack and, and force him to guard me. Do you have an explanation for what happened, just whole team-wise, defensively in the first half? Yeah, it was, it was communication. It was communication, and we let our offense dictate our defense, and that's what happens. I mean, we've done that a couple of times. When we're, we're not on, we, we let it carry over to the defensive end, and um, you're going to miss shots. You're not going to be, you're not going to shoot the ball well from the field every game, but what you can do is, is play great defense. You can force the other team uh, to have a lower field goal percentage, and we just let that. We let our offense dictate our defense. We weren't talking to each other. And it's so important to, to communicate when they, especially with as many shooters they have, they pick and pop, they screen, and it's just you have to be able to talk. And, and we did that in the second half, and, and we were able to come back. But, I mean, when you get yourself in such a hole, it's, it's hard to get out of that. And, and they had confidence going, and we were playing an uphill battle from the get-go, so it was pretty tough. You guys, have, and there have not been a lot of times when you've run into defense that lapses like that for such a long period of time, but it does happen. And obviously you know what the, the problem is. I'm just curious why, why though, I mean, what, what's the mental block to, to not allowing that to happen? What kind of things occur that allow you to fall into that trap? Yeah, um, it's, I mean, when you're playing, you don't, as you're playing, you don't really notice, I mean, it happens kind of fast, to be honest, and we, we talk about it, and it's just like it, it kind of spiraled, it kind of spiraled, and um, we just got to um, be able to to get ourselves out of that hole early, quicker, I mean, and, and, and we, we try to do it when we want to save ourselves embarrassment, and we got to do it, okay, we got to address the problem, we got to fix it, I mean, we'll talk about it, we'll talk about it, hey, we got to do this, and then we'll do it for two plays, and then Next play we won't, and then hit a three, and then we'll come down, we'll miss an easy one, and then we're still thinking about that. Then they come down, hit another three, 
and it happens kind of fast. And, and and that's why you see a lot of teams in, at halftime, they come out and they're totally different. It's because you at halftime you have 10 minutes to sit down and talk about it. You can sit down and talk about it. And it's it's just the main thing is addressing it and, and executing it during before it gets too bad. And if you can do that, then we'll be fine. But I'm, I know, I know uh, we won't do that again. Anything else?